My wife said it's proof that everybody loves her more because that side is full and this side is not. It is not up here, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it back there? Paul's looking for the acolyte candle. You'll find it? Okay. <laughs> Somebody over here didn't shower today or something. Uh, but uh, if you're wondering why we do have an extra... Oh, there we go. My phone is joining in live. Little delay there. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, we, are, we do have a baptism today, so we will celebrate that uh, after our scripture reading today. Uh, but to get us going, uh, we have some announcements, and then Carla will lead us in our call to worship, and then our opening hymn will be on the screen, number 77. We do have a few announcements this morning. Uh, as always, if you have any joys or concerns, please send them to Pastor Scott. He'll take your phone calls, your emails, your texts, uh, or please call Sandy Henkel. She is our prayer chain coordinator, and her phone number is on our bulletin. Uh, every Sunday morning around 9-ish, we have a Bible study with Pastor Scott. And what are you studying now? The Book of Acts. The Book of Acts. And we're just getting started, so join us. So if, uh, if you can't meet in person, uh, you can always join online. Scott has a link uh, that is set up that you just have to let him know to let you in, and you can do that virtually. Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we do a community prayer. Um, we ask all, everybody to join in at 7 o'clock to, to do this little prayer. If you, have, if you need a card, we have uh, plenty of them. And it's just for prayer, a communal prayer for the community. So as long as everybody's joining in, prayers are lifted. So please join us at 7 uh, coming up on May 19th is our next carry-in lunch, so put that on your calendar to make sure that, oh, yes. Oh, it's been moved. So what is that? That's what I just said. Oh. So May 19th is the new date. Okay, so please mark that or move that on your calendars uh, and bring in, do we have a theme this time or just bring in something good yeah, to share? It is the theme of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh, so How am I wear cook red. That? We encourage you to wear red okay. and uh, celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Oh, okay. So red themed things maybe. Okay, all right. You got a little time to think about that, folks. So. Um, and I think the only and last announcement I have are the altar flowers that are given uh, by Ernie and Kathy Musser for the baptism of Clifton Lucas. Yay. And uh, we are grateful for Janine for filling in again today on the piano uh, in place of Bonnie, uh, who's trying to get some rest today uh, from her adventures with Rod in the hospital. <laughs> uh, so uh, just continue to love and give grace uh, to Janine. I think she did a fabulous job last week. She doesn't think so, but we think so, <laughs> and we love you and appreciate you, so very thank much. you very much. Do we have... Uh, let hold us on, stand. Hold on, I'm not done. Uh, oh, sorry. I need to ask, do we have any other announcements for the good of the church? Just to make sure we covered everything. Okay, you can go now. All right, let's all stand <laughs> together. I'm glad I have permission <laughs> to do things. Let us stand for the call to worship and then join in our opening hymn. Please join me in the call to worship. He is the same from, bin, from the beginning to the end. How, How great, great is our God. God. All creation was made by his mighty hands. How, How great, great is our God. God. The word of our Lord endures forever. How, How great, great is our God. God. He is our rock and our redeemer. How great is our God.
back together. We'll keep things moving. Uh, we come now to our time of joys and concerns. Uh, Rod is still at UC Hospital. He is still in ICU, but they got him moved to a room with a window, which is really beneficial. Uh, he is sitting up. He's getting physical therapy, occupational therapy, and uh, every day he's showing little signs of improvement, so that is a continued uh, blessing. Uh, uh, Griff uh, did have an infection. They treated that, and they're moving him to a rehab facility. Uh, and uh, uh, prayers for Amy Reese. Her and Rick, one, they want safe travel mercies or are taking a vacation. They're going to be gone this Sunday, next Sunday. Uh, but Amy Reese had a bout with diverticulitis, and uh, she's hoping that the antibiotics and pain medicines get her through vacation. Uh, so anybody that's ever dealt with that knows what an unpleasant experience that is. And um, if you love on Mary Liebreth, be very careful. Her back is sore. She has a pinched nerve. And uh, uh, so just prayers for her healing uh, with that as well. Um, Danny, you got an update on Pat for us? Pat Brock. Oh, uh, Pat's doing okay. She just moves much, much slower. She does not have a uh, enlarged heart. She did go to the doctor and uh, follow up. Right. She's, uh, yeah, she said she had a fracture or something. So yeah. that's uh, inhibiting her. And, and just prayers for Pat and her family because um, Pat wants to stay at home. And Pat really needs to be in a better place where she can be helped and assisted uh, with that. And that's always a difficult decision uh, for the uh, person and for their caretakers uh, to make. So just continue to prayers uh, uh, with that. Uh, the biggest thing for Pat, it's not so much her house, it's her loving pets. And if she could take her pets with her, she's okay to move. But uh, taking her pets with her is not... Uh, uh, possible in most places so uh, prayers for that and uh, continue to pray for Bob he's back to being ornery doesn't mean he's hundred percent healed um, but he needs a lot of prayer regardless so uh, continue to pray for him and of course we have uh, the joy of Lucas being with us today for his baptism and the family so that is a great joy do we have any other joys and concerns or updates to share today Kat? But I also want to ask for prayers for my niece, and I might be faulting her. I lost count. Her mother had seven or eight stints put in this week, wow. so she needs prayers. So Kathy's niece had at least seven stents put in this past week. All right, so uh, regardless of how many, there's still a lot. Uh, uh, so prayers uh, for uh, her niece's mom. Other joys and concerns to share today? Yes, Martha. My cataract surgery went well. Oh, great. And she is in that weird phase where one eye can see and one eye cannot see. <laughs> uh, so if you've had to deal with cataract surgery, you're happy when it's successful, but until you get the second one done, it's kind of hard to know where your vision ends up. So uh, continue to, uh, for that. That's good news. Uh, any other joys and concerns? All right, well, let us be in a time of prayer, and then we'll share in the Lord's Prayer that will be up on the screen. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, we just continue to thank you for the answered prayers that uh, you have given us. We are excited about the progress that Rod is making in his recovery. Uh, we are excited about the recovery that David Bailey is making. Uh, Lord, we've seen your hand at work in many other people's lives, and uh, we continue to lift people up each and every week as your church. Lord, we truly believe in the power of prayer and the power it has to bring healing, peace, and comfort to those who are in need. Uh, Lord, we ask that you make this church strong and healthy that you make us your hands and feet in this world so that uh, we can provide uh, uh, for our community, but more importantly, we can provide them with the food they really need, and that is the food of your word uh, and your good news. 
Uh, Lord, there's not a whole lot that we can trust in and not a whole lot that we can put faith in uh, from man's world, but from God's world, we know that your word is holy and true, and may we be ever trustful in your good and holy word. Lord, as we come here today, uh, we are uh, joyful for the baptism that we are about to witness, and Lord, we just ask that your Holy Spirit just... uh, uh, that we're all open to the Holy Spirit's presence because your, your Holy Spirit's always with us. But especially today, allow us to feel that presence and may that child, uh, uh, may Lucas, uh, have that uh, uh, full experience of this holy baptism. And Lord, let us always remember as your good and holy people, you have taught us to pray together this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the word of God. Our scripture readings this morning come from Psalm 19 and John 1, verses 1 through 10. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voices go out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun, It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Moving into John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. The baptism of children and their inclusion in the church before they can respond with their own confirmation of faith, is a vivid and compelling witness 
to what we call prevenient grace. In the book of Luke, we read of Jesus' baptism. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. As he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. We are called to bring others to baptism as told to us in the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Today is my honor to present to you Clifton Lucas Musser. He is the sixth generation to carry the name Clifton. However, he will go by Lucas, and he is a great-great-grandchild of Carol. His godparents are Nicole Bonner and Eric. Uh, his parents have this to say to Lucas. This is for you, buddy. This is for you. You better listen. Yeah. If you haven't seen that smile, oh, it is something. So this is what your parents have to say to you. There are a few things I hope for you and your life. May you be brave. May you be loving and joyful and kind. And may you never forget through all of life's great adventures, through every moment of every day, that we will walk beside you, cheering you on, hoping for you, praying for you, loving you, and may you one day love your child as deeply as we all love you, always and forever. As we prepare for baptism, I must ask you, Jake and Emily, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church that was established through Christ? Please confirm your profession by saying, we do. Yes, and do you also? We will nurture Lucas in Christ's holy church. Will you nurture him that by your teaching and by example he may be guided to one day accept God's grace for himself, to profess, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Please affirm your commitment by responding with, we will. Yeah. And to his family and to his godparents, Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life, and as such, include Lucas before you in your care? Please affirm your commitment by responding with, we will. God has called us to be in community with one another. As we baptize Lucas, we baptize him into a much greater family. We, as his church family, have a commitment to all of God's children. Will you commit today to being his extended family and provide Lucas with examples of Christian love and faith? Please join together in the con congregational response on the screen. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that Lucas, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that Water is a powerful element. Water has the power to clean and purify. Running water has the power to transform the landscape and reshape it. And that is why water is such a powerful symbol in baptism. Through the love and grace of Jesus Christ, we can be cleansed and purified. And the same love and grace that flows through our lives, it can transform and reshape our lives. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this water and to Lucas as he receives it. As he is covered by this water, 
May he be covered by your grace and mercy until the day he may accept Christ as his Savior and therefore share in final victory. May this sacrament of baptism remind each of us of our own baptism and the powerful love and grace of Jesus Christ. Let's all gather around. And we're all left heads to gather. Are you ready for a little baptism? Are you ready? Clifton Lucas Musser, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Will our ushers please come forward for the taking up of our offering? If you would all please stand, we're going to sing our doxology. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of baptism. We thank you for the gift of faith and fellowship through your church. Lord, you are the giver of all things good. And Lord, we celebrate you through our worship today. And we give back to you just a portion of the blessings that you have given to us. Lord, may your hand of blessing be on these gifts. Give us, give us the wisdom and the courage and the knowledge to use these gifts in such a powerful way that we lead others to faith in Jesus Christ and transform the world by our love through your love. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our next hymn, number 156, I Love to Tell the Story.
Let us pray once more as we begin the sermon. Heavenly Father, what an honor and privilege it is today to serve you in the capacity as the pastor of this church and the grace and the love to be able to perform these baptisms. What a wonderful reminder of your love that you have for us. Lord, as we enter into this time of looking at your word, may each of us be open to your Holy Spirit and to the message that you have for us. And may the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We are now in our third week into the book of Psalms. Today we look at Psalm 19. And there is a lot to preach about in Psalm 19. I could probably write a half a dozen sermons just on this psalm alone. However, I promise we're going to narrow our focus and have just one sermon on this psalm today. Psalm 19 is one of many psalms that acknowledge God as the creator of the universe. And notice I said the creator of the universe because you know how serious Buckeye fans emphasize the the when we say the Ohio State University as if there is another Ohio State University. I mean, really? But I say the creator of the universe with emphasis because I think this, that it is very important in our faith to believe without a doubt that God is the creator of the universe. There are a lot of views on creation, but I truly believe God is the creator of the universe. So let us get into the scriptures. Verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Right away, David takes us back to the creation story. From Genesis 1, verse 14. And God said... Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You know, it wasn't just a few months ago that we as a church on Epiphany Sunday uh, went to view the stars. Well, it wasn't on that day, but in honor of Epiphany Sunday, we went to view the stars just down the road here at the Cincinnati Astronomical Society. And while their telescopes are not capable of getting us images like that from the Hubble or Webb Space Telescopes, I found it absolutely amazing to get a closer look at the planets and other parts of our universe. What we see when we look up into the heavens is not an accident. The heavens were created by God. He spoke the words, and suddenly a vault of planets, stars, moons, and galaxies appeared. And not only did God create these for our benefit, the psalmist says that these heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And right before our very own eyes, the heavens show us just how big our God is. You know, as our technology increases, so does our knowledge of the vastness of the universe. We realize it is even bigger than we thought. Some say it's even growing. But unfortunately, science does not usually celebrate this as the vastness of God's creation. And what typically happens is that we end up celebrating the triumph of man 
and not celebrating the creation of God. From the time the first rockets carried us into space, we have celebrated what man has done. With our advanced satellites, space telescopes, and rovers, we celebrate the triumph of mankind. Yay, look what we did. Yet the more we see and learn from the universe, what we're really seeing is just how big our God is. Even with our best technology, it takes two to three days to reach the moon. It takes nine months to reach Mars. And we haven't even come close to leaving our solar system, let alone our galaxy. And we get a rover to land on Mars, we go, look how great we are. And it took years and years and years of development to get something to land and work on there. Yet God spoke and instantly the heavens were there. And it is sad that mankind's belief in the creation story has been on a steady decline in the U.S. for many decades now, many non-Christians like Bill Nye, the science guy, are 100% against teaching the creation story. And you know what? That's to be expected, right? Do we expect non-Christians to follow our beliefs? No. But what is scary is that even many leading theologians and professors are teaching that our creation story is just a story. Reverend Stanley Jackie, professor of history of science at Seton Hall University and a Roman Catholic priest, calls the creation story simple, a parable with, good, with a good moral story. This is what they're teaching in seminary to pastors. Oh, it's the creation story is just a simple parable with a good moral story. Another professor, Shauna Delensky, teaches that our creation story is a collection of borrowed myths from other cultures. Teaching in seminary, we don't even have our own creation story. We borrowed everybody else's to make up our own. But you see, that's not what our scripture tells us. Going back to the psalm, it says, day after day, referring to the heavens, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. And in the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. The story of creation is very important to us as Christians. For this reason and this reason alone, it should deepen our faith in God. It should make it clear to us just how great and majestic our God is. Because just a look into the heavens shows us just how powerful our God really is. And there are people who can argue the literary nature of the creation stories. People argue whether it was six days or six billion years. People can punch holes in differences between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. However, we cannot escape this point. And if you're not awake, this is a point to wake up and hear. If you do not believe the God we serve has the power to literally create the universe by his spoken word, then how can you believe that this same God has the power to save us from our sins and give us an eternity in heaven. 
It just doesn't make sense. If you do not believe that our God has the power to say, let there be light and there was light, then how can this God save us from our sins? How can God give us an eternity in heaven? Because Jesus said, I'm going someplace. I'm going to make a place for you. I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you and I'm going to take you there. And the scripture tells us of this glorious place and this wonderful new garden and new heaven and new earth and, and streets of gold and crystal seas and all these wonderful things. And we want to go to heaven. But if we don't believe God created this, how do we believe that God is going to create that? Do you see the difference? It can't have it both ways, people. Because if you went down the street and you saw a, a, a really crappy carpenter build a house that was leaning to the side, and you'd say, boy, that's not a very good creation, is it? It's kind of broken and leaning. Would you trust him to build your next house? No, you want to see the God who created this great thing, who promised us another great thing. That's the builder I want. And even if you don't count the accounts in Genesis, the book of Genesis, there are hundreds of Old Testament references to God as our creator. Almost one-fourth of the Psalms, there's over 150 Psalms, almost one-fourth of them talk to us about creation. On top of that, the New Testament is rich in teaching us about creation. Nearly every New Testament book has references to the creation. Most notably from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Referring to Jesus Christ, he was the Word. And it says, he was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Our New Testament scripture tells us that God is the creator. That it was through the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that everything was made and nothing existed without them. And Jesus himself tells us about creation. In Mark chapter 10, verse 6, he says, But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Jesus didn't say anything about evolution. He said, we were made. In the beginning, God created the male and female. He didn't say there was a big bang and then some ooze and some cells that divided, that became fish, that flopped up onto the land and grew legs and started walking and talking. No, he said, in the beginning, God created us. And Paul gives us this word from Romans 1. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. As I mentioned before, the wickedness of man brings glory upon himself. And the heavens have became a place of challenges and failures and success of man instead of seeing it as the greatness of God. Man wants to prove how great he is instead of seeing how great our God is. When I was 39, I went to a urologist who ran some tests and told me I had prostate cancer. 
And I learned through my journey and through my surgery and follow-up visits that my doctor, Dr. Gaker, was a genuine man of faith. And I just didn't hear from him. I heard it from people in the community. They said, oh, who's going to do your surgery? I said, Dr. Gaker, oh, that is a good and godly man. You'll love him. Dr. Gaker is a good and godly man. And so one time at a follow-up appointment, I said, doctor, I said, you're a man of science. You're a man of medicine, a man of high learning, a man with skilled hands that went and removed my prostate. I said, how do you, as a man of faith, reconcile with what your own community tells you? That we are evolved, that we came from lower forms and lower creatures into what we are today. He said, let me tell you something, Scott. He says, I've been doing this for 40 years. And he says, the more I learn and see what the human body is and what the human body can do, I can tell you without hesitation, this is not a random accident. This is not just something that happened out of nowhere or evolved from something less. This is a body designed by a highly intelligent being. He says, there's no way that this collection of cells and atoms can function the way they do, interact the way they do, by happenstance. This is God's handiwork. See, the vastness of our universe is designed to make us look small and our God look big. And we also have to remember that when Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't just a punishment between man and God. It was a punishment between man and God and the rest of creation. Creation was affected by our sin. He told Adam, from now on, you'll never have just free food flowing out of nature. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to toil for it. You're going to have to fight the weeds, fight the ground, fight the drought. And so creation is also distorted. Because God created everything good. He created us good. He created creation good. And creation is also yearning for restoration. And yet even amidst the brokenness of the sin, because let's face it, cre our, our, our creation, our nature can be pretty cruel at times, right? We just saw a whole bunch of twisters go through Nebraska. We see floods, we see droughts, we see all kinds of things that happen is because of the sin and the brokenness that's also in creation. But how many of you can stand on a mountaintop and look over a beautiful valley and not see God? How many of you cannot see a rainbow appear in the sky or the sun turn to a gorgeous orange or pink or purple in the evening as the sun is going down and not say, Thank you, God. That was beautiful. If you go out to the Grand Canyon, you'll find it's not just a big hole in the ground. It is a beautifully carved masterpiece of layers of colors. If you've ever been to the painted desert at sunset, it is a beautiful and amazing place. If you've ever watched the sun crest over the waters out on the ocean, it is a beautiful thing. In the morning when the sun's coming up out in in the Guantanamo Bay, I was able to see hundreds of feet down, teeming with life and fish. We're discovering creatures today we didn't even know exist that our God created. So I ask you, what do you believe about God's power? Because if our God isn't big enough for creation, he isn't big enough to create heaven. If our God cannot flood the earth or part the seas as the scriptures tell us, he certainly couldn't make it possible for a virgin to conceive. If our God cannot have a whale swallow up a man and spit him out in three days, then he cannot send his son to the grave for three days and bring him back to life. Seeing the greatness of this created world should give us a faith in a God who can heal, who can forgive, 
who can transform and who can provide eternal salvation. You see, what we believe matters. What we stand for matters. Because as Paul says in the book of Romans, we are without excuse. God has provided evidence all around us that he is real. And not only do we have his creation to reveal God to us, God also gave us his holy scriptures. <coughs> Excuse me. Just listen to the rest of the psalm starting in verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to our eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, much more pure than gold. They are sweeter than honey. What we believe matters. What we stand for matters. Because we have a holy and just God that says you must humble yourselves before me and you must believe that I am God. And if you want to share in the promises that God has for you, he has called us to come to him through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And it is only by faith in his son, Jesus Christ, that we share in the eternal promises that are God's. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. And his words are always trustworthy and true. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we come to you today and Lord, I pray that our hearts have been humbled. I pray that your Holy Spirit has nudged us and pushed us and forced us to ponder what we really believe. And Lord, I have full faith that you are the good and great God that you say you are. For if you do not have the power to create, you do not have the power to forgive. You do not have the power to restore, and nor then do you have the power to make a new heaven and a new earth for us to dwell with you for eternity. You're not just a God, you're the God. And today we sing our praises to you out of our abounding love for giving us life, giving us blessing, and giving us hope and truth even in this broken world. This we pray through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand now and sing our closing hymn, number 144, This Is My Father's World.
be the first time I was wrong. Thank you, guests, for being here. Thank you for the honor of doing Lucas's baptism. And to all of you, you are invited, and Lucas is part of our family. And this can be a place of growth and nurture for all who seek God. And you're welcome anytime into the sanctuary, and anytime and forever you need anything, ask this congregation, I'm available to you. Because life can be hard, life can be challenging. But when we go through life together as God's people, as a people who see him as the great creator, the provider of life, and more importantly, the provider of salvation, it changes things. And when we live together as a community of God, it is a very powerful and wonderful experience. Let us leave here today knowing that we serve a great and powerful God who through a spoken word millions of stars appeared and yet that same God loves us each of us let us go knowing of that love and that great glory of our wonderful God let us leave here with joy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be able to perform these baptisms. What a Be able to perform these baptisms. What a wonderful reminder of your love that you have for us. We are now in our third week into. Amen.
We are now in our third week into the book of Psalms. We are now in our third week into the book of Psalms. Today we look at Psalm truth even in this stand now and sing our closing hymn number 144 this we pray through the name of your son Jesus Christ amen just making sure I was right this time it wouldn't be the first time I was wrong Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you for the honor of doing Regis' baptism. And to all of you, you are invited. And Lucas is part of our family. And this can be a place of growth and nurture. Just, just making sure I was right this time. It wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you for the honor. of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Amen. Thank
thank you, Jeff, for being here. Christ. Amen. It wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you for the honor of doing Rigus's baptism. And to all of you, you are invited. And Lucas is part of our family. And this can be a place of growth and nurture for all who seek God. And you are welcome anytime into the sanctuary. And anytime and forever you need anything, ask this congregation. I'm available to you. Because life can be hard. Knowing that we, Holy Spirit, amen.